If you're struggling with solving lead code questions, then you came to the right video. I used to be just like you, but after dozens of coding interviews under my belt, I've learned a few tricks along the way. For better or for worse, lead code style questions are the norm for interviewers at most tech companies. And instead of complaining about the coding interview process, you can instead learn the strategies that top engineers use when prepping for their coding interviews. You see, coding interviews are like a game, and like all games, there are strategies you can use to win. But most software engineers don't know these strategies, and coupled with the super competitive market for tech jobs these days, it's no wonder why software engineers are having a hard time. The reason for this is, if I'm being honest, most people just don't know how to properly prepare for coding interviews. Remember, lead code is a skill, and any skill can be learned. That's why I'm going to share three key tips you need to follow if you want to improve your lead code skills. These are the three tips I use to go from making $5 an hour working at a startup. Yes, you heard that right, $5 an hour, to making six figures at Amazon in under two years. And I was able to do this without any CS degree and being a completely self-taught programmer. I'm a firm believer that if I can break into the tech industry and land a lucrative tech job, then you can too. And the whole purpose of this channel is for me to share all the information I wish I had when I was just starting out. So just sit back and listen as I give you these actionable tips that are going to change the way you interview prep forever. All right, let's jump into tip number three, which is to practice how you'll interview. What do I mean by this? Basically, you need to mimic the real world coding interview as much as possible. You need to get used to solving problems the same way you would in a real life interview setting. One thing you can try when solving problems is to make sure to time yourself. Like a real coding interview, you only have a set amount of time usually 45 minutes to one hour. I recommend for easy questions, aim for around 30 minutes. For medium and hard questions, give yourself at least 45 minutes up to one hour. If you find yourself stuck, don't be afraid to look up the solution. If you do though, then the key here is to fully understand the solution. Afterwards, you can mark it for review and come back to it a few days later. While timing yourself is crucial, it's not enough on its own. Another thing I've done with great success is voicing my thoughts out loud. You see, every interviewer is going to judge you on the way you approach problems. So using this strategy is good practice. I know it sounds weird, but voicing your doubts, concerns, and ideas about the problem out loud can help with your thought process and get the juices flowing. It's the same reason why some software engineers use rubber ducks to help them solve problems. Asking questions about the input, expected output and potential edge cases is all fair game. Questions like, are negative numbers allowed for the input? Or how is the input stored? And can you modify the original array, graph, or data structure in any way? Even repeating the question back in your own words helps. And finally, if we're talking about how to practice for coding interviews, then we should also discuss timeline and schedule. Before you even think about going on a coding interview, you need to have adequate time to prep. I suggest at least four to six weeks. I found this to be the sweet spot as it allows you to review foundational topics like data structures and tech specific topics. For example, if you're an iOS developer, you need to talk about things like concurrency, the MVC pattern and stuff like that. But it also gives you time to practice your problem solving abilities, which is why I suggest at least two to three hours, five to six days a week. This should give you enough time every day to solve at least a couple of lead code questions and fully understand their solutions. It helps to think of interview prepping like a part-time job or a side hustle. It needs to become part of your routine. Also, this one might seem obvious, but if you have a friend, then you guys can take turns mock interviewing each other. That also really helps. All right, so that's it for tip number three. Let's move on to tip number two, which is to focus on high ROI topics. ROI means return on investment, which in this case means focusing on questions that have a higher likelihood of being asked during a coding interview. Here's a graphic showing the distribution of various problem types on lead code. As you can see, arrays, strings, hash tables, and dynamic programming are some of the most commonly asked questions. It's very common for candidates to get overwhelmed when interview prepping because they think they have to solve hundreds of problems or tackle a bunch of hard problems, but that's just not true. Now, I'm not saying to ignore less commonly asked question types like stack or heat problems. You should still study those topics too. The point I'm trying to make is to prioritize questions that have a higher chance of being asked. 
I left the link to the graphic in the description below. But still, if you suck at graph problems, then focus on graphs. If you suck at dynamic programming problems, then focus on dynamic programming. I find the strategy very effective and it's helped me stay on course when I was prepping for my interviews. Remember, prep smarter, not harder. All right, so that's it for tip number two. Now let's move on to the final and most important tip, which is to learn coding patterns. Coding patterns have been the single greatest game changer for me when it comes to coding interviews. Once I was able to learn what these patterns are, it supercharged my interview prep in ways I never thought of before. I was able to walk into interviews and have the confidence that no matter what problem was given to me, if I could determine which pattern best suited the problem, then I would be able to solve it. If you don't know what coding patterns are, they're proven techniques shared by several coding problems. You can think of coding patterns as proven templates that once learned can be applied to solve a wide variety of problems. For example, one of the most famous coding patterns is the sliding window pattern. It's useful when dealing with problems that require tracking a subset of consecutive elements in an array, linked list, or string. This pattern officially maintains a window of elements, updating it as it moves through the sequence, a very useful pattern for optimizing time and space complexity. There are also other patterns like two pointers, union find, modified binary search, and many more. Now, I'm not gonna cover all the coding patterns in this video, as that would make this video an hour long, but I have written an article covering the top 15 patterns most commonly used in coding interviews. If that sounds interesting to you, then please check out the link in the description below after you're done with the video, of course. In any case, the thing about coding patterns is there's something that takes time to develop. Only after you solve enough problems over a long enough period of time do these patterns start to make sense to you. So then that begs the question, how can you learn these patterns faster? The first thing you can implement into your interview prepping is to study with intent. What I mean is to focus on one group of problems at a time. For example, you compile a list of graph problems on LeetCode and practice only solving those for a few days. After solving a problem, write down by hand on a piece of paper or notebook your findings, things like your brute force solution, your optimal solution, and how you optimize the solution. Really get detailed. If you do this for enough problems, you can start to find similarities between problems in that group. Eventually, you'll start to notice how all graph problems involve some sort of traversal method using either breadth first search or depth first search. Then you'll begin to notice that most graph problems involve either traversing a graph in a certain way, grouping components together, or determining a proper ordering of some sort. After enough time, you'll start to develop an intuition for graph problems to the point where you know exactly when you're faced with one and the best ways to optimize a problem in that category. Once you learn one concept, then choose another to focus on and repeat this until you feel ready to interview. The thing is, this is easier said than done, especially if you're new to the tech field. This is exactly why I've created Tech Interviews IO. It's an online learning platform tailor-made to teach you all of the important coding patterns you might encounter in a coding interview. You see, coding patterns are the superior way to prep because the human brain internalizes information better when we can apply systematic, proven knowledge to problems. Instead of grinding hundreds of problems on LeetCode, why not focus your prep time on learning the key building blocks that underlie most algorithm problems? The key benefits are that you reduce prep time significantly and retain information for much longer. You can sign up and try the free content available on the site, completely risk-free. So if you're looking to supercharge your interview prep, then I suggest checking out Tech Interviews IO. Either way, you can't afford to ignore coding patterns in your interview prep anymore. The benefits of learning them are too high to leave them out. But learning how to lead code and interview prep effectively is only one side of the coin. There's still a lot of mistakes you can make as an interview candidate. And believe me, I've made my fair share of mistakes. Once I've learned which mistakes to avoid though, I noticed that I received fewer rejections and more offer letters. If you're looking to improve your coding interview performance, then you're going to want to check out this video to see which mistakes you should be avoiding when you're out interviewing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.